All right, that was a great line. Joining us now from the spin room in Milwaukee is 2016 Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump. Mr. Trump, uh, were you first? Were you happy with the debate tonight? I thought it was extremely substantive. I thought it was great. I thought the uh, anchors, they really were, the moderators were really elegant in the way, all three, the way they presented themselves, the way they presented the questions. I thought it was a very elegant evening and very substantive, as you would say, yes. You, you know, uh, and there were good differences on economic plans, on immigration, which we just played. It was interesting to listen to Kasich and Jeb Bush going up kind of against you and Ted Cruz. And It's true. And... And I thought Ted Cruz made a point, if these were bankers crossing the border, if these were journalists crossing the border and driving down rates, I think the press might have a different point of view. I thought that was a strong point. Well, we were on the same uh, side of it. And, you know, if you go back to the 1950s, early 1950s, Dwight Eisenhower, and I made that point during the debate, he uh, took out, in terms of illegal immigration, he felt you had to do it. And he was a nice man. He was a high-quality man. But he moved out one and a half million people. And brought them back to where they came from. They were here illegally. So I think that it really does have big precedent and it's got to have, we either have a country or we don't, Sean. We have a country, we have to have borders, we have borders, we have to have laws. We either have a country or we don't. And it's that simple. You know, Mr. Trump, it seems nobody talks about this aspect of it too, is the economic impact in terms of people that now have to compete for jobs, it drives down wages, but more importantly, how much is this costing our country in terms of our educational system, our criminal justice system, our health care system? The, we're talking about billions and billions of dollars because people don't respect our laws and sovereignty. Well, I'm Sean, I've heard the number is $250 billion a year illegal immigration. And frankly, it's an expensive proposition moving and everything else. But you're talking about tremendous amounts of money that we spend, not to mention other things. For instance, when you look at the crime and you look at other elements that happen that are also very bad. So we're talking about $250 billion a year. That's a lot of money for a country that owes $19 trillion. And $120 trillion in unfunded liabilities. That's a lot of money. You're absolutely right. You talked about every, every tax plan that was men mentioned on that stage is better than the mess we have now. And I agreed with your statement. I want you to specifically lay out your tax plan because I don't think most people understand there's a significant portion of the American population that pays zero. I think right. you, you said fill in, I win right. on, on your tax form. The people at the very bottom economically, uh, less than $25,000 or 50 if it's a family, pays zero. Now, I'd like to have them pay something just as a token, but the truth is it would cost so much from the standpoint of bureaucracy. So those people, and we want to get them into tax-paying citizens by having them make a lot of money and start paying taxes. But we brought it down. It's a graduated tax. We brought it way down, and we're going to have four classes right now, as you probably know. So it'll start at zero. It'll go up to 20 and then 25 percent. The corporate tax is 15 percent, which would be one of the lowest in the world. And our country will be booming. We're going to charge 10 percent to bring the corporate inversion, bring all that money, the trillions of dollars back into the country. It wants to come back in, but there's no way of getting it here because of the taxes. So we're going to have a plan that's very dynamic. It's been very well received by a lot of people. It's going to be graduated, and a lot of good things are going to happen, Sean. I agree with you, repatriating that money. That's going to bring trillions of dollars back. The energy specter, if we become energy independent, that's a big component. Right. I'd also think, what would your corporate tax rate be? I think if America becomes the corporate tax haven of the world, then all of these multinational companies will want right. to headquarter well, right here. Right. We're going to have a 15 percent corporate tax rate, and that's getting to be on the low side. We right now, we're the highest taxed anywhere in the world, and we're going to now be on the low side. There'll be a couple of countries lower, but not many. So we're taking it from the highest in the world to being on the very low side. I want to play, I think, the, probably the most passionate moment you've had in any of the four debates this was you talking about Iraq and the troops and taking the oil. Let's play this. Look at Libya. Look at Iraq. Look at the mess we have after spending $2 trillion, thousands of lives, wounded warriors all over the place who I love. Okay, all over. We have nothing. And I said, keep the oil. And we should have kept the oil, believe me. We should have kept the oil. And you know what? We should have given the oil. We should have given big chunks to the people that lost their arms, their legs, and their families, and their sons and daughters. Because right now, you know who has a lot of that oil? Iran and ISIS.
You know, we pay for the liberation of all these countries and they don't ever give us a dime. I thought that was a very powerful moment in the debate for you. They give us nothing. And that's because we have people that don't know what they're doing. Sean, they give us nothing. You're one of the few people that's willing to say it. But we have people that don't have a clue. And we should have had that. When, and you know, I've been saying on your show for three years, you got to leave, keep the oil. We shouldn't have been in there in the first place. And I've been against it from day one because you destabilized the whole Middle East. They should have known that. But once you were in, you leave and you keep the oil. So now who has the oil? ISIS has it. Iran has it. We don't have it. We have nothing. You know, I, I was interested in a couple of other things you said tonight. And I, I agree with this point, too. If Vladimir Putin... Now that we, in all likelihood, he had a, a Russian airliner shot out of the sky or blown out of the sky by ISIS. That's right. If, if he wants to take out ISIS, let him do it. Let and him. Said, I've been saying it for two months. I mean, if he wants to do it. So now he's not in love with ISIS. He doesn't want them coming into Russia, believe me. But now on top of it, he had an airplane blown out. He really doesn't like. So if he wants to go after ISIS, Sean, I think that now we're going to do it also. But if somebody else wants to do it, I think that's just great. I'm interested. Do you th agree with the idea of, of the separate refugee camps, maybe within Syria, where we provide humanitarian assistance, medical supplies, food and water, rather than people migrating to, to Europe or coming to the United States and also protect it militarily? Is that something you support? It's called a safe zone. And they take a big piece of land, a big swatch in Syria, and you get all of the Gulf states and all of the countries like Germany and others that are ruining themselves with what they're doing. They're ruining Germany. It's hard to believe that she's allowing that to happen. You create a safe zone, a big safe zone, and you take care of the people and you work the people until they can ultimately go back. But that's a lot better. Can you imagine us taking 250,000? President Obama wants to bring 200 to 250,000 people in, and he doesn't even know where they come from. They don't even have papers. We don't know who they are. Well, so we can't do that. And, and it costs billions Clapper, of dollars. And James Clapper said ISIS and Al-Qaeda will infiltrate the refugee community. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's That'll no happen. Yeah. Um, I was interested, too. You also said tonight, we have made this mistake many times in the country, and you pointed this out tonight. I want you to expand on it. That oftentimes we say, oh, we'll support the, the, the rebels, in this case against Assad, we don't know who they are. We, we don't have know no if idea. we'll end up with something worse. You mentioned Libya is a great example. Now Libya is a safe haven for terrorist training camps, etc. Explain well, what you true. would do instead. It's true. You know, everybody says, oh, we want to get rid of Assad. Assad's no beauty. Assad's not great. Assad's a bad guy. But we're supporting these people. A lot of people think that the people we're supporting are ISIS. So we're supporting the rebels. We're spending hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars, giving them weapons, giving them everything. Russia's fighting us because they don't want them. And we're supporting people. We have no idea who they are. I spoke to a general the other day, very knowledgeable guy. He said, Mr. Trump, we have absolutely no idea who these people are. So here we are again. You have Libya. You have Iraq. Now we're supporting other people. They'll get in there. They'll probably be worse than Assad. So you say, what are we doing? We got to build our country. We have to fix our country, knock the hell out of ISIS. But we have to build our country, Sean. And you know that. And you agree with that 100 percent. I did like the moment you, tonight. I, I thought you were very gracious. You, you said, will you please let Jeb Bush speak? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I meant it. I mean, really, yeah. he was cut off a couple of times. I meant it, actually. Yeah, I know you did. I'm just um, it was it was just an interesting side note. Last question. Fifty six hundred pages. TPP. Nobody's read it. Nobody read Obamacare. They pass these bills all the time this way. Should there be a limit on, on the, a number of pages a bill is yeah. before we pass these things, considering, right. you know, I think Ted Cruz made the point. It's, it's more pages than the Bible and less less meaning than any one page. Almost 6,000 pages. Nobody's read it. We have no idea what we're doing. There's no currency manipulation clauses in there. China's going to come in through the back door. Everyone's laughing at us. We have people, I'm telling you, we have 6,000. I'm the one that brought it up tonight. We have six, almost 6,000 pages, and nobody's even read it. It's we truly don't know what we're doing. So it's one of the, it should not be passed. All right, Mr. Trump, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate your time Thank as you. always. Thank you, Sean.